thee we come, O Lord, our God. confession. Let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of your conscience. And now, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his power given unto me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Noah, found just and perfect, renewed the race in the time of devastation because of his worth there were survivors and with a sign to him the deluge ended glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, our God, as Noah was saved in the ark, while sin was drowned in the flood, so by the waters of baptism, May our mortality be swept away, and may we be brought to your holy mountain. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
John, would you please come and proclaim the word? A reading from the book of Genesis. God, sa <clears throat> God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living, living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings so that the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to Gradually. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth. So I have sworn not to be angry with you, nor to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place, and the hills be shaken. My love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had once been disobedient, while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism which saves you now. It is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Behold the rainbow, then bless its maker, for majestic indeed is its splendor. It stands in heaven with its glory, dispelled by the mighty hand of God. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah, with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for forty days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel, the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Please be seated. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterward he was hungry. These words are taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, in Christ. How appropriate that on this, the first Sunday of Lent, the Church speaks of the temptation of Jesus in the desert. This event in the life of our Lord is found in the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and was directed by these three evangelists to the great civilizations of the Jewish, Roman, and Greek worlds. What must have been the mindset of our Lord following his baptism? The Holy Spirit had just descended upon him, and he heard a voice saying to him, You are my Son, in whom I am well pleased. Did Jesus afterward gather with his family and friends to celebrate this occasion? No. He needed to get away from everybody and everything to understand what had just happened. We read in Matthew that he was led in the Spirit, by the Spirit, in the desert. In today's Gospel, he was drove into the desert by the Spirit. Jesus needed to be alone in the desert to understand more clearly his mission. Do you remember who the apostles Peter, James, and John saw along with Jesus at his transfiguration? It was Moses and Elijah who both went into the desert to be alone with God and to understand their missions. And so Jesus went to the desert alone, without food, water, to not only find God but to more clearly understand what he was to later pro proclaim in his mission, that the kingdom of God is at hand. He went out into the wilderness, amid the wild animals, to be completely drained of himself to overcome the final obstacle himself. It was when he was at his lowest, hungry and thirsty, alone, probably afraid, that the tempter came to him to test him. The three temptations of Jesus reflect what John spoke of. The first temptation was for Jesus to change stones into bread. The second was for Jesus to throw himself down from the parapet of the temple at Jerusalem. And the third was to obtain all the riches of the world. The only condition for Jesus was to tempt God and bow down and worship the tempter. With each temptation, Jesus quoted scripture from the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, 
to give him strength. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You shall not tempt the Lord your God, and you shall worship and serve only the Lord your God. We read that following these three unsuccessful temptations that the angels ministered unto him. Coming out of the wilderness, Jesus would soon afterward enter the synagogue in Nazareth, his local church, or in his case, a synagogue. And he read from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. You know that during the entire liturgical year of the church and its seasons, Lent is the only time when we are actually called upon to have a change of attitude, to give back unto God our love and our devotion. At every single Mass prior to the receiving of the consecrated wine and following the partaking of the Eucharist, the celebrant says, What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he has given unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Lent, my brothers and sisters, is a season where we are all called upon to seek to know God more clearly in our lives through the three pillars of Christianity, of fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. Lent is a time where we need to privately get away from the influences of the world and concentrate more deeply on the spiritual world which is within each of us. Lent is a time to place God over the many temptations that the world offers to us, to you, and to me. Lent, beginning with Ash Wednesday, is a 40-day journey for each of us to overcome our own desires and most importantly our own egos. In the first letter of St. John we read, For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. Did not Jesus teach in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Did not Jesus teach us that the kingdom of God is within? Did not Jesus teach us that all those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. And did not Jesus teach us in praying within our own inner rooms? Our blessed Lord taught that no man can serve two masters. Jesus was tempted by the devil, the tempter, after 40 days in the desert to either serve the tempter or to serve God. If we are to follow God during this holy season of Lent, we must, as our Lord taught us, to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Him. And so may God give unto each of us the strength during this holy season of Lent to endure, to overcome, through our own understanding as found in the Word of God. 
to overcome whatever stands in our way, mostly ourselves, as we seek to find God in our own lives. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. In the adventure of Jesus Christ. I be he leaving one on God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God told Noah, This is the sign of my covenant. I have established between me and all mortal creatures that are on earth.
my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands to the praise and glory of His name for our good and for the of His Holy Church. Amen. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. Make us worthy to bring these gifts to you. May this offering cleanse us from our sins and make us deserving of your Son's sacrifice. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through our fasting, you increase divine life within us, you preserve us from sin and lead us into eternal life. Through our abstinence, you confirm us in goodness and curb our unbridled vices. As we commem commemorate this 40 days of fast of your Son, may we together with him give unto you glory. Therefore, we join this day with the voices of angels and archangels, along with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox in Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord, And all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love, to his disciples, and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries, and when spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, 
to you, God, his almighty Father, in giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice, immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, the Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment to life and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who put our hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles, martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, out and following divine in example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in us, a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, for those of you who will not be able to receive sacramentally the Holy Eucharist, may we offer this prayer. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall they return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. 
receive the body and the blood of Christ. we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are our faithful high priest, tempted in the wilderness so to help others who are tempted through this holy communion aid strengthen purify us for you live and reign with the father and the holy spirit one god forever and ever Amen. the lord be with you be pleasing to you most holy trinity grant that the sacrifice which we the unworthy have offered up into the side of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through christ our lord amen may the almighty merciful god bless you 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life, life of the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks Thank you, God. God. Thank you. 